In this video, we're going to start to create our large form shape. So to do this, I'm going to create another node which is going to use a noise. So over here in our library, if we come over to our generators, you'll see that we have a category for noises. And so here, if we just kind of browse through, you can see that uh, we ship with several types of noises. The one I'm going to use uh, in this particular case is going to be the Perlin noise. So just to find that quickly, I'm just going to use the search and I'm going to start to type in Perlin. And here you'll see that we have the Perlin noise. So let's left click and drag and drop an instance of this Perlin noise here into our graph workspace. So once again, I will double click. I'm viewing the output here of this node in my 2D view, and I'm also viewing its instance parameters here in the properties. So here, there is an option for scale. And like I said, I want this to be large form. So what I'm going to do is simply take this scale slider and just move this down to uh, perhaps around four. And I'm going to zoom out just a bit here in my 2D view. So just Alt and use my right mouse button, and I'm going to move my mouse upwards. And so now I can see the full image that I'm working with. So the reason I'm choosing this Perlin noise is you can see that it starts to give us these large kind of slope shapes here. And these are going to work pretty well for, uh, again, the large forms that I'm wanting to create for my ground. Here again, I'm just going to kind of zoom in so we can see this is what I'm talking about here. It's kind of these large uh, form shapes that we're going to start with. So each of these nodes that we instance here into our graph, they're automatically going to be tiling by default. So here in my 2D view, if I simply just hit the space bar, you can see that this activates a mode that allows me to see or visualize what the tiling looks like for each node. Now with my mouse within this red box here, and this red box indicates, uh, if we think of this in terms of UVs, this is like the zero to one space, or if we think of it just in terms of pixel resolution, this is my square aspect ratio here for the width and the height of the image that I'm working to create. So if I move my mouse outside of this, you can see that box disappears. Now again, I'm going to hold down my Alt key, right mouse button, move my mouse up, and as I, so as I zoom out, we can get a better visual of how this uh, noise is tiling. So here we'll zoom in again, and if we look right here at this edge, or this seam, uh, this noise is perfectly tiling. And like I said, that's the default state for all of these nodes that we work with here inside a designer. So now let's go back here to our properties. And we've talked about our instance parameters, but every node that we create is not only going to have instance parameters, but they're also going to have base parameters. So if we take a look at these base parameters, you can see that it has this output size and output format, pixel size, and so on. Even here, you can see that we have this tiling mode and it's set to horizontal and vertical tiling, like I said, by default. So one of the fundamental things that we need to understand working at this stage is that a node, as we've been saying, is an instance as it's placed here inside this graph. And we can think of this node as a child of the root level graph. Think about this as an empty area, almost like if this is a box, and within this box we're placing uh, this Perlin noise and this base material within this box. So these nodes are now children of our main root graph. Now again, our root graph is talking about this graph that we created early in this chapter. This is our dirt ground, and it contains these nodes. As we start to hook up and connect nodes, we're going to be creating a node network. This brings us to the concept of inheritance within Substance Designer. And so the first way we're gonna look at this is through resolution. So you'll notice here with this node selected, right below this we see this resolution which is set to 2048 by 2048. We also have this L16. L is talking about its color space, meaning linear, and 16 talking about its bit depth, meaning that this grayscale node is operating at 16 bit. Also, you'll notice that since this is a grayscale node, it has this single gray dot or circle. Before, when we were looking at our base material, you can see it has a yellow dot. So anytime you see like a yellow dot, that indicates that we are looking at RGB data. And when you see a grayscale, well, we're looking at grayscale information. All right, so again, back to the idea of this inheritance. So one of the things we see right here at the very top of the base parameters is the output size. And we have a width and a height, and it's set to 0, 0, and it's talking about a parent. So you'll notice that the default value of this is 0, 0, and it's parent times 1. What this essentially means here is that it's inheriting its resolution from its parent. 
and the parent for this node in this case is the graph which is our dirt ground here remember think a dirt ground as a box and we've placed this perlin noise inside of it also if you come over to this output size there's this little icon here if i click this down you can see there's a setting here now it's getting cut off in the screen recording but it says relative to parent or absolute by default it's set to be relative to parent meaning that this node will have its resolution set relative to its parent again the parent being the dirt ground so one of the ways or the easiest way that we can set resolution as we work is just to change this option up here called the parent size so here at the very top of the ui you can see we have this drop down now if i switch this drop down and let's say that i set this to 512 so i'm going to choose 512 you can see now that the resolution of this node has been set to 512 by 512. Here I'm demonstrating that by changing the parent size, because this node has its output size set to be relative to parent, it's inheriting its resolution from this parent size setting. So once again, I'm just going to set this here to 2048 by 2048. And now you can see that we're working again with that particular resolution that we set here under our parent. For the most part, we don't need to worry about this output size. However, what I do want you just to kind of have in the back of your mind is the capability we have to go into here. Let's click this button and I'm gonna switch this mode here to absolute. Now, I'm gonna set this resolution again just by using the slider so we can do this visually to 512 by 512 pixels. So now you'll notice that this resolution has an absolute value of 512 by 512. It's no longer inheriting that resolution from the parent size. So regardless of what I set this to, it's always going to be using this absolute resolution of 512 by 512. Here, once again, I'm going to click this button and set this back to relative to parent. And now here again, you can see we are now inheriting our resolution 1024 by 1024 as we are here. Now, let's go ahead and set this back to 2048 by 2048. And we're actually gonna close up this base parameters and we're just not gonna worry about it for now. The key takeaway from this is that you just need to be aware that resolution is inherited from its parent to a node and a node can have its own specific resolution absolutely set on its base parameter. All right, so now that we have this node, what I'd like to do is start to feed this here into my base material so that we can begin to visualize what we're creating here in our 3D view. We're also going to take this height information as it's represented in this single Perlin noise at this stage, and we're going to create normal and ambient occlusion out of this as well. So again, we can further visualize the overall surface attributes of this height as we continue to work and build up more detail. So to do that, we're gonna come over to our base material and you can see I'm just going to left click on this. We're gonna load its parameters here in the properties panel. And here towards the bottom, there's a section here called user defined maps. You can just expose all of the inputs here and you can see that there's a bunch of options or boxes here all set to false. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna come over to this height and I'm going to enable this height. So I'm just gonna click on this and set that from false to true. As soon as I do that, you can see that all of a sudden this base material has a new input that says height. And now I can make a connection. So to make a connection from one node to the other, all I have to do is come over to the output, left click on it. You can see a little connection line is drawn out. I'm holding down my left mouse button and this connection line is following my mouse. And I'm just going to just come right over here to this height and just feed it in and let go of my mouse button. Now we have this gray line that's indicating a connection from one node to the other. And we have our Perlin noise as viewed here in our 2D view, and it's being fed right in here to our base material. Now I'd also like to create some normal information out of this height, and I'm doing that so that we can better visualize what we're going to be working on here in our 3D view. So now I'm going to create another node. This time I'm going to hit the space bar. We have these operational nodes and we have this normal. So I'm gonna use this. So I'm gonna left click on it to create an instance here of the normal node in my graph. Now, another way that we could have created this node, if we look here at the top, there's a little toolbar here that shows a list of nodes. These nodes are the same as the nodes that we see here, which are the atomic or operational nodes from just hitting our space bar or tab menu. And so instead of creating it this way, I could have also have clicked this button here, which is gonna generate the same node. So now we need to make another connection. Let's come over here to our Perlin noise. 
left click on the output and let's plug that into the input of the normal and let go of our mouse. So now I'm going to double click this node. So make sure that I'm viewing this here in my 2D view. And I'm gonna come over here to the intensity slider. This is the specific parameters for this normal node. Now you'll notice here that as I move my slider, it goes up to an intensity value of three. Now most sliders in designer will have kind of this default state uh, between like either zero and some value. Here it looks like the maximum value is three, but really what I could do is come over to this box here. If I just left click on it, it turns into an input field where I can then type any value I want. So for example, I'm gonna come in here and type 24 and hit enter. Now the slider redistributes its range around the value that I have. So now our maximum, I could go all the way up to 48 or down to zero. So in my case here, I'm just gonna set this to be a value of 24. Now we're creating some normal data directly from this Perlin noise. Now let's come over here to our base material and I wanna feed this into the base material. So with the node selected, for my instance parameters, I'm gonna scroll down and where I have these user-defined maps, I'm going to click this false button to enable it. And now again, you can see that we have another input. Let's make another connection. So we're gonna take our node, our output here for our normal, left click, drag, and place it here into the base material. Now we're starting to see some information here in our 3D view. And at this stage, I always like to try to clean up my nodes. So you can just left click and drag these guys around so you can get a more sensible idea of how these connections are working. All right, so we have our normal and we have our height and they're both being fed into this base material. Now, the next thing we need to do is actually adjust the scale value on our shader. So what we're gonna do is come over here to our 3D view and under materials, I'm gonna click this. I'm gonna go through my default definitions physically based metal rough, tessellation. This is the shader that we're using. So we're using this tessellation shader. Now, like I said, I wanna actually adjust some properties on this shader. So really all I gotta do is just come over here and just click this edit button. So now here are my properties. I'm looking at my height tessellation factor. We'll leave it at a value of four for now, but we have this scale. Let's come into here and let's set this to a value of 10 and I hit enter. So now here in my 3D view, I can actually start to see some displacement with the amount driven by the scale factor that I've set in the properties. So our height is feeding in here to our base material. Our base material is what we're viewing here in our 3D view. We're overriding the base material's default uniform values with an actual height map, which is this Perlin noise. From this Perlin noise, we've created some normal data that we're also feeding into here. Now, one more thing that I wanna do before we close out this video is I'd like to get an even better sense of the shape and form that I'm working with. So what I like to do at this stage is, is to go ahead and create some ambient occlusion information. So we're gonna create another node. This time I'm gonna hit the space bar once again. Under search, I'm gonna type in HBAO. And that is going to filter for me this ambient occlusion, HBAO, which stands for Horizon-Based Ambient Occlusion. So I'm gonna left click, and that's gonna generate this node for me. And you can see as I mouse over this node, it takes height information as an input. Well, it just so happens we do have some height information, which is our Perlin noise. Let's take another connection out of here and plug that into our height. So now, make sure we double click. We're viewing this here in our 2D view, and we're also looking at our parameters. We can start to adjust things like our overall height depth. So I might set this to a value of maybe 0.25 for now. So I wanna be able to visualize this. And the best way to do that right now at this stage is just to come over here to my base material. Let's left click on this and let's scroll down here in the parameters or the properties and let's come over to our ambient occlusion input and let's set this here to a value of true. Now this gives us this ambient occlusion input. So what I'm gonna do now is take the output and we're gonna make this connection. So let's left click, drag and drop and place this here into the ambient occlusion. However, you can see, oh, for some reason it won't let me do this. So I can't make this connection. Sometimes you may run into an issue like this. And this is happening because of the link creation mode that's set. So sometimes a node, when it's set into this compact material mode, it doesn't really know how to make the connection. So to fix this, all we have to do is just tap one on the keyboard. That's gonna set me to this standard creation mode. And now I can make my connection here. 
And if I like, I can hit three on the keyboard to go back to that compact material mode. All right, so now here in our 3D view, because we have this ambient occlusion, and again, I'm gonna left click on this just to bring back my instance parameters here, and I'm just gonna adjust my height depth here. So let's just over crank it a bit. Uh, actually, let's set this just to a value of 0.45. So now you can see that the ambient occlusion is also helping me to further visualize this shape and form that we're creating here. And so now what we have is the base of this height map detail. So the height, we have our height map, we are starting to create some maps from that information. So we got our height. From the height, we are deriving our normal and our ambient occlusion. And all of these are being piped into this base material node that we're using as kind of like an overall, like a mat cap or our modeling material here as we work in our 3D view. Again, we can go back to this base material at any time and just make some quick adjustments to our material. So for example, I don't have any rough information yet. So let's just come over to the slider and let's just drop this down. So now I can get just a quick idea of what this looks like if we were to have, let's say, a very smooth surface or kind of a medium uh, level surface and so on. Or if I needed to just get an idea of color, I could just quickly set a color value and so on. So you can see that using this base material allows us to do some material experimentation really early on just using these default uniform values as we work. So now in the next several videos, we're going to start to move from this base height information, which is representing kind of our large form shape, and we're gonna to start to build up more intricate shapes and forms, as well as break this down into smaller details. And each time we do this, we're gonna to continue to feed this data here into our normal and our ambient occlusion, which is then fed into our base material, which automatically updates our 3D view as we work.